Good morning, chickadees. Long time no talk to. So just before we get started, um, a very quick kind of health update. I think we have finally gotten my meds just about where they need to be. And after feeling pretty horrible for a long time, uh, I've had like a whole week of being good, which is almost unheard of. So I finally feel like getting back to you guys and doing my videos and oh, yeah. Okay. So yesterday I did a huge top up. Um, honestly, for the last month, I've basically been eating something straight out of the can, like soup or something like that, because I haven't felt like cooking. And if you've been with me a while, you know that normally I have all the fruits and vegetables. And so I had to do a big top up, which I did. And yeah, ready to go. Okay. So this morning, I'm going to start with making a chaffle. I Now, I know they've been around for ages and lots of people make them. I have never made them myself. So this is going to be kind of cool. Um, my cousins have some new chickens this year and they have, look how little. So they have some young hens and I wanted basically like two scrambled eggs. And when I weighed these out, because they're so much smaller, these three equal the same size as two standard eggs. So I'm going to use those. And then a lot of the recipes that I saw add a type of flour. Most of them use like an almond flour. I'm not doing this from the keto standpoint. And I had picked up some oat flour from Kroger. So I'm going to try that. And then I have some spinach, some Roma tomato. I'm going to use a slice of white American cheese. I'm going to cook a couple of pieces of turkey bacon. I have some Hellman's light mayo and that's it. I'm going to put that together, cook that on my little dash mini waffle maker and hopefully it works. All right, so we're going to try this. I've cracked those three eggs. I put them in just my little magic bullet cup because I wanted something slightly easier to pour than a bowl. So I have those in there, the three eggs with one tablespoon of oat flour. I saw various different amounts and most of them, I will say, if you're doing the keto one, most of them contain like half a cup of cheese and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. So this is just going to be like scrambled eggs made on the waffle maker. Can anybody tell me why they make these cords so short? Goodness gracious. All right. So I have sprayed this down with a little bit of avocado oil and it has come up to temperature and this is going to make two. So let me see if I can hold this and pour this at the same time. Okay. I don't know how full to make it. I'm going to go whoop too far. My table slants. All right. I'm going to have to put you on hold and tilt it. Okay. That made a mess, but I just put some little um, wooden skewers <laughs> under one side so that I could stop the tilt. Okay, uh, that's how much egg I have left. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let me see how this is. I might be able, now that it's cooked a little bit, because I've got so much left, let me pour a little bit more on here. Nope. Shouldn't have done that. Messy, messy, messy. All right. I made a hot mess on my table. Okay. But wow, this is like really puffed up. Let me see. I don't know if I can take this. I bet this is going to be like stupidly hot. Mm. I happen to have some tongs. So let's Okay. 
that will work and I'm just going to close this for a second and then I'll do the second one with a lot more knowledge now. I love that y'all don't care if I mess up stuff. <laughs> okay, so here is the one on the bottom and I have half a tablespoon of Hellman's Light and I'm going to put one piece of the American cheese and then turkey bacon. If you're not a big fan of turkey bacon, try the Genio one before you write it off. I can't stand the Butterball one, but the Genio I like. Okay, so I've just taken two slices, folded it into thirds, and I'm just going to put that on there for a second, and then I'll do the other egg. Now, these are fully cooked, so basically I'm just heating it up. Alright, so those are my toasty turkey bacons, and I've just poured, I'm going to pour like half of that in there, close it, let it cook a little bit, and then I'll top it off. Now, the only other thing I have left to do, I'm going to put some spinach on there, I'm going to cut my tomato, and then that will be all ready to go. Alright, again, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you'll know this is Sakura. Uh, he is one of my crayfish. And I haven't shown you, but uh, I, I said months ago that I had some babies, or I was possibly going to have some babies. So these guys are little baby guppies. Okay, but Sakura, I am going to give him a little piece of my turkey bacon. I scared him. <laughs> the guppies are like, I'll check it out. Okay, let me finish what I'm doing here. There we go. So he's going to take that back into his little corner back there, and he will have a little bit of breakfast too. Okay, that was fantastic. Definitely, definitely would do it again. So it came to 314 calories. And I know that I want to have, I have this really gorgeous birria, um, which I'm going to have for lunch. And so I wanted the bread that I normally have is like 110 calories a slice. So if I had made that into a sandwich, it would have added 220 calories to the the breakfast sandwich. And that's fine. It would have definitely been within my day, but my birria is high calorie. So I wanted to look at where I could cut my calories. And that worked perfectly. It was exactly what I wanted. It was easy to eat um, and 314 calories and 21 grams of protein. So I am set. Now, uh, last thing before I put my spinach away, somebody had asked me, how do I stop the salad mix from just going off in a couple of days? And what I do, so once I've opened this, I just fold up a couple of paper towels, put it in there, and that way, um, it absorbs any condensation in there and we're all good to go. So I'll put that back in the fridge. I posted in my Facebook group uh, yesterday that I had gone shopping and I realized that a lot of my YouTube people are not on Facebook. So I was going to show you my little top up. Now, I do keep a lot of fresh fruit and veg. If you've been with me a while, you know that 85% of what I eat is sort of lean protein, fresh fruit and veg. So I topped up nothing exciting up here. I got some more cottage cheese and some yogurt. And then I have Food City had these little pre-cut fruit cups on sale. So I bought some of those. There is pineapple, strawberry, cantaloupe is behind that and honeydew is behind that. And then at the very, very back, there's some kiwi fruit. I have some grapes, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and plums. I also have some pomegranates on the shelf. 
Then veggie wise, I picked up some tomatoes. Don't come for me. I like my tomatoes cold and in the fridge. I got some purple cabbage. I'm going to do some pickled purple, um, like some purple sauerkraut. I have some green beans, cucumbers. There's my spinach, spring mix, and this is just some stir fry veggies. <clears throat> Basically like this, but a uh, different flavor. A crown of broccoli. I got some avocados, some apples, artichokes, another honey crisp, some baby baby mandarins, sugar snaps, and snow peas. So that's basically that. Let's see what else. Spinach artichoke dip. I found some pickled okra, which I'm going to try. I got some strawberry cream cheese, and the rest of that's just normal. Milk, juice I take my pills with, Dolma. And then this is my little deli tray. Let me push those in. So basically, you can set it for whatever you want to do. Um, I got some prosciutto to have with the green beans. That's my turkey bacon, which you just saw. Oh, I'll turn that this way, just in case the zip wasn't done. Some lunch meat. Laughing Cow, that's the little singles you saw, my little cheese selection, so that's pretty much that. That's the freezer. I haven't um, cleaned it out, so it doesn't, <laughs> there's nothing exciting in there, some fish food and some bread. And then my, oh, I will say I have a upright chest, uh, not, not a chest freezer, an upright freezer. And that has all of my normal freezer stuff in it. That's why there's not a lot in there. And then fresh cilantro, some butter, condiments, condiments, my water, uh, olives, pickled onions. But there you go. So that is what my fridge looks like starting for this week. I'm really excited to get a bunch of this going. While I was showing you that, I remembered... I need to do some more pickled onions. This is um, pickled beets. And this is pickled onion brine that I made. And then there's I poured a jar of pickled beets in there. Because the beet coloration makes the onions super, super cool. So I'm going to... This one looks really, really dark. These are the, the um, Kroger 99 cent bags. Where they put like produce they're trying to get rid of quickly. I don't know until I cut into this whether this is going to be okay. If not, I'll use this one or I have some new ones. But uh, I'm not, I don't need to do too much with this in the description. I have put the recipe that I use for making my particular one. Now, I do like more sugar in it. A lot of recipes will call for like one tablespoon of sugar, and I actually use more. So the recipe that I've linked to won't be for everybody. But if you like a sweeter pickled onion, like a, a pickled beet, then that's the recipe to use. All right, my loves, welcome back. So it's actually gotten a bit later. It is almost 530. And I'm trying to close the kitchen by about seven. So that means I'm definitely not going to get another two meals in today. But I really want to do this birria, so I'm going to do that, and we'll kind of go from there. So here's the deal with the birria. I have a local restaurant. I've made birria myself in the crock pot, and it was okay. I've tried four different recipes up to this point. I've never found one that's quite exactly what I'm looking for. However... We have this little mom and pop restaurant. They are a Guatemalan restaurant and they do birria and they do um, a birria burrito. They do quesadillas. They do the classic birria tacos. They do uh, birria ramen. And I have to say their sauce is fantastic. So one day I asked the uh the wife if i could buy just some consomme just the soup and she was like oh okay and so we came to a price and she will sell me these containers 
I bought one yesterday. It's stunning. Now what I'll do is cook some beef in the crock pot, shred that up, and then just put that together. So this has been in the fridge <laughs> and uh, there is, when you do this, I use a chuck roast and it can be a little fatty because I don't trim it down all the way. So what you're seeing in here is um, where the, the fatty part in the liquid especially has congealed sitting in the refrigerator. So I promise I don't have funky stuff in there. But I have my shredded beef and I have my birria consomme. I'm going to do a bowl and I was going to cook some brown rice, but I actually don't feel like waiting for that to cook. So I'm going to use the better than rice because that I only have to heat up. And then I cut up the rest of that red onion, which by the way was perfectly fine. And I cut up the rest of the Roma tomato that I had. I'm going to add going to cut up some other tomatoes. I have some avocado, some fresh cilantro, and some Greek yogurt that I'm going to put in there. Now this all together, once I do my bowl, is only going to be 465 calories. But my breakfast was, I mean, like I said, it was 21 grams of protein. I am not, I wasn't hungry before now. And I believe, I'll have to double check, but I think it leaves me with like 750 calories for the day after this. I'm obviously not going to hit that, but that does give me room to have a fruit and yogurt bowl um, as my sort of dessert before I close the kitchen. So for this, all I need to do pretty much is heat everything up. The better than rice doesn't need to be cooked. You just rinse it and heat it. The consomme, I'm going to portion out with four ounces of beef and I'm gonna go ahead and heat that up. And then I'll add my cold vegetable toppings. So onions, tomato, avocado, cilantro, oh, uh, lime juice. I don't, I didn't put that on the table. Put a little dollop of yogurt on there. And this will be both beautiful and delicious. So I wanted to clarify something real quick. Uh, you see Sakura's hanging out there. And somebody had asked me about keeping fish with crayfish. And didn't he try to kill them? And I just wanted to show you, because he's just kind of come out where you can see him. This little guy here is what's called a hill stream loach. So he is actually uh, an algae eater. He sucks on the side of the glass, keeps the, the um, glass clean. And I'm not sure where he is, but there is, you can kind of see his shell. There is a giant, oh, here we go gold snail in here and then the babies and no he doesn't tend to bother them some other ones might but he specifically has been perfectly fine i just came into my bedroom um i'm gonna watch some tv and these guys are ready for dinner so i thought I'd show you how that tank's going. So that's the main goldfish tank. I've got a couple of little dojo loaches and then there's some little guys in there. Cherry barbs and zebra danios and things. But it's mainly goldfish. So that is how that tank is going. This tank is the tank beside of that one and that has mostly platies. There is, whoops. There's a little black angelfish in there. And then down towards the bottom, so there's snails in here, I have neons. And then female betas. So that's those guys. So that is the second large tank. I have those two tanks sitting beside each other. Okay, 
have to go really quietly because these guys hide a lot. But these, you can see there's two. They are called Pictus cats. And they are so stunning. But I tell you, they hide under this driftwood most of the time. I can't normally, if I get too close to the tank, they'll, they'll take off. But you got to see him. So I have uh, two of those guys in there as well. All right. And then in this tank, whew, which needs an ouchy clean, I have the baby dwarf Mexican crayfish. And then these guys are called Harlequin Rasporas. And I have one beta girl. She was getting picked on in the female beta tank. So I moved her over into here. So that is all of those guys. There's actually four of the little crayfish in here. Here's one of the other girls. She's quite shy. She's not really a big fan of, like I, I walked up to the tank and she was like, what are you doing? But you can see she has a, she's a different species. So you can see she's got much bigger claws. I don't think she's going to turn around so I can show you. Let's see. Yeah, you, you can see her a bit. But that's one of the other girls. And here is one of the other boys. He's like... You bothered me. <laughs> Let's see. So you can see him. And he lives with a whole bunch of mountain minnows. White cloud mountain minnows. And then in here, this is my painting room. I have a couple of male betas. Let's see if he'll turn around. Isn't he gorgeous? So there's him. And there's another one. I know, you guys want dinner? So these two uh, tanks are on my painting desk.